So you can um, start whenever you want. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Rahim, ladies and gentlemen, this is Farah Tasif. I'm the founder president of Institute of Diplomatic Studies, Institute of Peace and Diplomatic Studies. On behalf of COMSTAC, which is the Ministerial Standing Committee on Scientific and Technological Cooperation of the OIC, and the Institute of Peace and Diplomatic Studies, uh, Inter-University Consortium for Promotion of Social Sciences, Humanities and Arts, which is an alliance of 50 plus universities, I welcome all of you to this webinar on science diplomacy during COVID-19, partnerships, innovations, and opportunities happening today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Institute of Peace and Diplomatic Studies is a premier diplomacy, leadership, and peace studies thing and do tank. We are envisioning ourselves to be a higher education institution. We call ourselves think, of course, do tank. Why? Because we believe in not only thinking, um, and believing on uh, moving forward, but also acting and, uh, you know, uh, advocacy as well. Um, IPDS has um, several initiatives under our belt, including um, diploma courses for the diplomas, engaging in public diplomacy initiatives uh, over the past several years. Uh, many of the challenges, ladies and gentlemen, as we face today are international and, of course, um, including the climate change, fighting the disease, uh, and various others, these are all not only national, regional, or global challenges, but we also need to find these global problems, global solutions as well. So that, that is why we always think that why not create a role uh, for the science in international policy making and diplomacy, connecting people and scientists together to find solutions to our problems. So diplomacy, as far as um, uh, you know, it's a global norm is concerned. It's also an international cooperation as well. Um, specifically for science diplomacy, we also uh, envision uh, science diplomacy as including advancing the scientific goals and finding solutions for the humanity. I'm so honored that we are collaborating with ComStack uh, for, for this special webinar. And I'm honored that uh, Professor Dr. Paul Chaudhary, who is the coordinator general of the ComStack uh, is, is sharing a panel. And of course, for this uh, specific uh, webinar, I also welcome him uh, for the welcome address. And before that, a slight introduction, which Iqbal Chaudhary Saab will also give you huge, uh, you know, diverse and comprehensive introduction of ComStack. It is the Ministerial Committee on Scientific and Technological Cooperation established by the Third Islamic Summit of OIC, which was held in Mecca. Uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary Saab, floor is all yours for the welcome remarks to the audience. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning and good afternoon. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, this is uh, indeed an honor for us at Comstrek to welcome you to this very important uh, webinar, which we are organizing together with uh, two important organizations, uh, Institute of Peace and Development Studies and Inter-University Consortium for the Promotion of Social Sciences. Certainly a very important thought-provoking discussion is ahead of us. Uh, I, uh, I'm just filling in for Professor Tarman, who was supposed to uh, open uh, this webinar, but he has a very important uh, meeting with the Prime Minister, so he would uh, be able to join us only later. Uh, as uh, Farhat mentioned very rightly, I think uh, never in the history of humanity uh, such crisis has emerged. So we had pandemics and pandemics and lots of people died, but the magnitude, sheer magnitude of uh, this pandemic and the way it has spread uh, was absolutely unprecedented. And also at the same time, uh, literally we have seen uh, the failure of international diplomacy and science diplomacy because at the time of need, when nations needed help from outside, uh, they were absolute fa failure. It was the lowest ever in the history of humanity and every country has to, has to struggle on its own to, uh, to handle this huge crisis. And as a result of it, uh, there is, I, I believe there is a change of psyche of humanity at large. Uh, nations uh, start rethinking about what, what would happen post COVID and uh, uh, what, how uh, they would survive in, in next pandemic, which is forthcoming. So 
there were so many social economic issues related to health issues also and in that context a few international organizations only a few were able to perform i would uh, speak on behalf of comstec though uh, an organization uh, is uh, is uh, limited to ic countries but despite the fact that uh, we uh, work only with this 57 member states we use science to connect ourselves to the other countries also and uh, this comstec uh, organization which is the only oic institution in pakistan chaired by pakistan is certainly a very important asset for the country because this is uh, an institution which can be used to link uh, and unify countries together and there were many initiatives which i will share with you uh, so farhat if uh, format allows i like to go through uh, some of my slides and that these are only few so i would not be spending more than 8 uh, 10 minutes uh, but i would like to explain what uh, has happened during the covid pandemic uh, and what would happen beyond covid 19 the uh, this is a very important quotation and that has uh, actually reflect how pandemic affects humanity historically pandemics have force in human to break with the past and imagine their world anew this one is not different it is a gateway between uh, the old world and the next one and this is exactly what is happening according to unesco uh, back to normal is a dream a pipe dream and uh, there going to be new normal so there going to be lots of redefinition of what normal would be in future i see as uh, with my uh, biological science background i consider this pandemic as a as a last warning i i feel that uh, pandemic is going to be a new normal also and uh, if you look into the pattern sars 1 was in 2003 and within 9 years 2013 and 12 mars came and then sars cov 2 which is just 7 uh, years is uh, is is the next in pandemic line so i would i predict that uh, the next pandemic would be in 6 years time perhaps a lot much larger magnitude and that is the reason that preparedness and international cooperation are extremely important uh, i don't want to go into the detail of why pandemics would be now new normals but just uh, Uh, with my understanding of environmental uh, paradigm i can tell you that this is human animal interaction yuval harari in his uh, book on uh, homo sapiens said very rightly that uh, uh, humans and animals have actually culminated together new forms of uh, of uh, bacteria viruses and fungi so uh, global pandemic and science and technology this was this is a brighter side of it never in the history of humanity science and technology was so promptly and so efficiently deployed it took i was i was in usa back in 2000 uh, 1981 when hiv uh, patients start uh, it hiv was reported in 84 to 85 there was absolute wilderness and it took them 5 years to develop a simple pcr based test for uh, hiv aids in this case it took only 3 weeks only 3 weeks to develop a test which is uh, reasonably credible and also genome came within 4 weeks of time and viral inspector and proteins were identified between 7 weeks of time so science was deployed very very promptly and many countries of the world were successfully able to transform this calamity into opportunity and those countries are much more confident because they have ex explored them and they have explored their potential pandemic exposed the importance of good governance uh, social justice investment in health and education most importantly indigenous capacity building and science and technology uh, so i i i consider that and i don't know whether my uh, diplomat colleague would agree with me it's, it was a miserable failure of science diplomacy and international cooperation cooperation between nations and international organization were the lowest ever ldc ldcs were left alone to handle a health crisis of an unparalleled magnitude and associated social and economic crisis organizations such as who were discredited and systematically weakened so much so that they have to actually find the ways of keep them relevant 
And there was a new, new uh, diplomacy emerge called PPEs diplomacy. And this is my terminology, which I use because only through PPEs, many nations have actually uh, earned goodwill because there was a complete absence of global health for struggling nations. You and I try for outcry for global ceasefire and rolling back of sanctions were absolutely ridiculed in actions. Uh, IDPs and refugees were left uh, un unsupported. And somewhere in between, international cooperation start emerging in the field of vaccine development. But I'll tell you something very important. This was largely to meet the requirement of a minimum of minimum subjects. This was not an international cooperation per se for development of SNT capacity and uh, bringing nations together. So, uh, in in the context of OIC, which is my area now, several OIC member states responded successfully through the prompt deployment of science and technology, including our own country. Pakistan has responded very well. And I think the reason we were able to do it because we actually deployed science. We had a very important component of science advising the policies. Top scientists and healthcare professionals were incorporated in the decision-making process. This happened in Pakistan also. And there are, up to yesterday, 22 clinical trials of new therapeutics are underway in OIC region. Three vaccines indigenously developed in OIC uh, countries are in various phases of development. And several uh, OIC nations, including our own, uh, start developing self-trial relies on something which we have never thought of, you know, from zero on 26th uh, February to, uh, uh, to July, we have, we have something like 78% of what is needed to handle the COVID crisis indigenously produced. And there is a transformation. So uh, many countries, first time in their history, start developing their own biomedical and bioanalytical equipment. There is a need of harmonizing them encouraging them and making them capable of going into iteration of technology because technology is always an iterated process. Over 30 genomes of SARS-CoV-2 virus were sequenced in OIC in the member states An absolutely interesting work because this actually tells you how the virulence of this virus with changing uh, uh, genome is, uh, is modifying its uh, infectivity. Modern ICT tools were actually used in many places, including our own. And then uh, science and technology can, in the post COVID period, uh, redefine the whole international cooperation. This is, in my opinion, a best case scenario. Healthcare will be elevated from, uh, uh, from national and regional issues to a global issue, emergence of a global health security regime. It's very clear that if one nation, one country, one region, even a one single territory is not safe, all of us are unsafe as well. So global strategy in tandem of local capacity building is very important. Man st will start living in harmony with the nature. Emergence of a biophilic world. I feel that we have to develop a biophilic understanding that we are uh, one of, uh, one of many inhabitants of this planet Earth and not the only one. So we need to actually work on healthy planet. SDGs need to be redefined. I think they become redundant in, uh, in post-COVID period. They are no more relevant as we need to define critical goals which are beyond uh, many what, is, what are there right now. Okay, research and development for preparedness for the future pandemics will drive future scientific endeavors. So the whole science has to be driven how to handle health crisis, and that's going to be a cross-cutting uh, theme. Application of modern science would uh, be focused on developing resilience and preparedness against health challenges. And economies will become more interdependent and humanistic. In my opinion, this is what the best case scenario is, but certainly a worst case scenario is that uh, poor nations will be left on their own to handle huge post COVID economic crisis and thus creating a world which is unfortunately volatile, unstable in dangerous. Healthcare uh, will remain inaccessible for poor. So there will be healthcare facilities, but no system as we have seen in North America. Pharmaceutical and vaccine development will continue to be viewed as a businesses, pharmaceutical large conglomerate 
will drive profit out of uh, these businesses. And bad governance and regional conflict would continue to inflict pain. This is my last slide. And just want to tell you that Farmstech has launched a major scholarship program for virology and vaccine development by in incorporating 17 leading institutions of OIC countries. And this is uh, supported uh, currently by Higher Education Commission. Islamic Development Bank has also uh, shortlisted that. We have uh, established OIC network of laboratories for the development of diagnostics. A very important initiatives because now we have labs working together and there are many activities. Comstack map for the first time, the best practices in OIC world. And we have actually put them together in a very logical order of how or different countries have uh, have handled that and what are the best practices in terms of tangible and qualitative and quantitative way. And then we have uh, now nine, uh, COVID-19 pandemic in OIC world and elsewhere. There is a whole technological map available on the website. We have now webinar series of very, uh, uh, very uh, thought provoking. Uh, we had our Fellow First Society Professor Dr. Zulfakar Bhutta talking about the social practices and uh, the impact of COVID 19 in the Muslim world. Uh, we have recently conducted uh, a huge capacity building course, about 400 uh, participants from 32 countries. Uh, we have uh, organized exhibition of indigenously developed technologies in, the, in Pakistan, including one AI recently. And then we are playing a lead role in OIC WHO working group for COVID-19 and healthcare. So what I really feel is that, uh, this is my last slide, that uh, uh, Comstack being a leading organization, also custodian of STI agenda, science and technology innovation agenda uh, is all set to deploy science and technology to unite nations and regions for the global common good. And science, has universal values, it is apolitical, non-dogmatic, and its dialectical pursuit can resolve many mundane and stunning differences. So I feel Comstech is ideally placed uh, to uh, not only develop international cooperation, but also uh, move forward the image of this country, which has performed so well. Thank you very much. And I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of Comstech in this very important webinar and I'd like to acknowledge the efforts of uh, both institution, Farhat, and also uh, Murtaza Nusa for organizing this event. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary, for your wonderful remarks, of course, sharing important uh, steps that uh, Comstack has been taking over the years and now, especially in these pandemic times. Um, we are also honored uh, to collaborate with you in these important, uh, you know, in this important step. I think that these uh, conversations should continue going on because science and technology, and especially when it extends and collaborate with diplomacy, it's, it always put forward not only the traditional value on issues of the diplomacy, but also uh, it addressed um, various other important, uh, you know, um, specifically related to, for example, if, if the issues are related to the national um, um, and moving forward a country. Um, for instance, if we look at um, the cybersecurity, if we look at artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and various others, these are becoming more essential in national economy, security, and overall well-being of the country's prosperity as well. And when you look at these challenges, countries are also developing new diplomatic approaches and techniques to establish not only you know, presence of these innovation hubs in the countries, but they also collaborate in different countries as well, you know, different countries. And of course, the cross-pollination, Professor Iqbal Chaudhary would agree that, uh, you know, this cross-pollination of two different dynamics, you know, public diplomacy itself, and then science, uh, they, they should join hands. So Pakistan should not remain an exception. And my next guest who has remained um, a very excellent diplomat in the foreign office, uh, serving at different positions in uh, at 
different levels in the foreign office currently uh, his excellency imran ahmed siddiqui saab who is high commissioner of pakistan to bangladesh and consider as pioneers and uh, you know forward drivers of uh, science diplomacy within the foreign office we are so fortunate enough to have his kind presence here um in a, on those those all students faculty members and participants who are watching us right now anywhere across the world anywhere in pakistan you're welcome to ask questions you are also welcome to ask to share the comments and suggestions you are also welcome um the floor is all yours imran ahmed siddiqui sir bismillah rahman rahim assalam alaikum can you can you hear me yes, yes. we can hear you well thank you very much comstack and thank you very much uh, uh, ipds for uh, organizing this uh, presentation this discussion um, i before coming to uh, bangladesh uh, was the consul general of pakistan in toronto and uh, when i went to toronto i in addition to my traditional uh, you know job description i always thought as to how could i you know um, what contribution can i make to the to the economic growth of pakistan and uh, for uh, promotion of uh, you know knowledge base of pakistan for strengthening of knowledge base universities research institutions in pakistan because what i would see in toronto all around was science and technology toronto is a hub of uh, um, innovation and uh, science and technological research 70% of uh, the inputs as far as human resources are concerned uh to the to the silicon valley in the us goes from uh, from waterloo university uh, which is in in canada and the universities around it so so there was a huge basically uh, treasure uh, and i wanted to uh, basically uh, you know benefit from it, uh, from it not only for uh, for our country but also for uh, uh, for those communities pakistan communities uh, who who uh, you know were in other uh, parts of the of the world like in in australia uh, like in, uh, in in new zealand and in several european countries we tried to establish some kind of connections with them also while sitting in toronto so uh, so i would like to share with you my experiences as uh, the envoy of pakistan what pakistan's envoy can do particularly in the developed world Uh, it's uh, that you see this uh, this this the job of diplomats have moved has moved moved away from the traditional role of promoting only political and security interests basically political and security interests are very closely inter, um, interlinked with the science and technological development your uh, economic profile your uh, cultural your soft power you know all these things are interconnected so the envoys who are going abroad particularly in the developed world they have to be uh, be aware of all these trends their interconnectivity and they must have some strategies strategies to 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 use them for the benefit of their their own country i would like to share with you as to what we did and i would also like to share with you the challenges and the difficulties that we came across while implementing uh, this concept which should not be new but it was new for uh, for the ministry of foreign affairs and fortunately at that time Uh, diplomacy as you all know is the management of international relations by means of dialogue and negotiation the method by which international political cooperation is promoted by diplomats and synergies synergies built by envoys science diplomacy aims at uh, promoting collaboration and cooperation in the field of science for respective or joint development science diplomacy is very important for states like pakistan as they work to enhance their economic growth and and uh, try to put the country on a sustainable uh, development track uh, we we must understand and implement new and emerging uh, trends in science and technology if we want to do it effectively as a matter of fact economic growth is all about productivity and uh, i do not want to talk about the productivity of uh, pakistan at this stage you all know about it we have to do a lot to uh, not only um, improve it but to use it for our overall sustainable um, in our overall sustainable development strategy without productivity it would be difficult to enhance um, uh, economic growth and productivity might not be possible if the if the focus is not there on uh, on scientific development and uh, transforming technological trends this was the framework uh, within which we uh, we operated and at that time uh, 
as far as theory is concerned, we, we, we thought that sustainable development goals would pro provide a theoretical background for us to operate. To, it would be easier practically also to find uh, uh, willing uh, partners uh, in other countries um, when we used this framework, sustainable development framework. With all this in mind, uh, we started uh, a program basically for uh, uh, science and technological co collaboration between Canada and Pakistan. It was for the first time, uh, there must be, you know, uh, enterprising colleagues of mine, senior and junior, who, who would be doing, you know, several things in this domain. But we tried to organize it in, in Toronto. We developed a concept and we shared this concept with the, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and we requested them to establish relevant uh, you know, administrative structures, basically to support us and to support other uh, uh, missions which were uh, involved in, in scientific development uh, uh, and collaboration uh, uh, projects. In my view, a serious approach in this field will involve A, proper training of envoys, B, a better understanding of weaknesses and strengths of your own country and the country you are accredited to. It is very important. Unless you know your country, your strengths, your weaknesses, and unless you know the strengths and weaknesses of the country you are going, you are, you are going to, you would not be able to establish a useful collaborative uh, network, network or mechanism. Thirdly, a proper theoretical framework and clear guidelines within which science diplomacy initiatives to be taken. Uh, we adopted sustainable development goals as our guiding principles. And how did we implement and uh, co-opted them within our strategy? I would, you know, uh, basically throw some light on it in a later, at a later stage. Uh, and last but not the least was the complete information and functional rapport between envoys and international institutions involved in promoting science or knowledge promotion activities in the country. When we go abroad on our posting, we meet a number of economic actors, FPCCI, uh, companies, uh, uh, you know, owners or the managers of large companies of Pakistan to promote their interests uh, abroad, which are basically Pakistan's interests. But somehow we do not have uh, a program to interact with the national institutions, uh, which are involved in promotion of knowledge and uh, uh, science and technological base in our country. So, so in my view, if you are going abroad with this intention to promote science, science and uh, technological you know, uh, collaboration, with the country of accreditation, we have to interact before leaving the country with the heads of all these institutions, which are doing a great job as a matter of fact. But many invoice, including myself at that time, we didn't know about it. We wanted to know as to what is our strength. How can you see, when we talk of collaboration and cooperation, everyone seeks a mutually beneficial collaboration and co cooperation. No one is going to give us every, any, you know, everything without asking us as to how can we contribute to to whatever they are doing. So this is how we have to develop us, you know, this is where we have to develop a synergy and, and, and find uh, areas to which we can help, uh, uh, you know, other countries. Science diplomacy projects should be part of official assignments of our diplomats, particularly those who are posted in the developed countries. The envoys must evaluate scientific and technological landscape of the country of his uh, accreditation and should identify where mutually beneficial co uh, collaboration can be established. We, for insta instance, started collaboration the, in the field of health healthcare. There is, there is a huge uh, appetite for data collection for various research projects in uh, research and science uh, rich countries, uh, from countries like ours. There are several reasons for that. Chief among them is the need to focus on diseases which are prevalent more on South Asia, particularly in Pakistan. These diseases are mostly genetic. Various research institutions in many countries are focusing on, those, uh, on these diseases from genetics point of view. And the reason for this is this, that uh, you know, a number of, uh, inter because of international migration, uh, a large number of people have gone from, the, from South Asia to other countries. South Asia is uh, uh, one fifth of humanity lives in this part of the world and a large number of, every year, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people go abroad, they settle abroad and they take their, their, the diseases which are specific to them, specific to their genes. And, they, and they, these diseases are now 
mainstreaming in other countries. So the governments over there are very much concerned about it. The health professionals are focusing on research as to find out, uh, um, uh, uh, you see, healthcare strategies to stop them, to restrict them, or uh, to find the cure, you know, uh, the cure which is sustainable, which can be used for, uh, for patients in those countries also. Uh, so, so because of this, they want to collect data from countries like us. All we needed to do is to establish a reliable contact between uh, uh, the research institutions in Pakistan and the research institutions in, in Canada, which we did, which, I mean, it was a difficult job to, uh, finding uh, partners within the country, within our, our own country, uh, whom we don't know. We did not uh, meet them when we were coming, going abroad for our assignments. It was quite a challenge, but uh, that challenge had to be overcome. We were fortunate to have uh, established connections uh, with ICCBS, uh, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary's institution, um, and other institutions in the country with the NIH, with the Indus Hospitals Research Institution, with the, we tried to establish, but we could not, uh, with the, you know, uh, the Children's Hospital in Lahore, uh, and there are other institutions also. Uh, <clears throat> Next, we moved on to give uh, the collaboration a formal shape by organizing actors supportive to our initiatives on a platform. For this purpose, purpose we launched Canada-Pakistan Research and Development Council. The council was comprised of uh, Pakistani scientists active in science and technology, uh, as well as research and teaching programs in Canada. Those who had some recognition uh, in the areas, we particularly approached them and requested them to be part of that uh, council uh, because we want to develop them as a lobby. For, for Pakistan's, uh, uh, you, so, you see, fundamental interests um, and for the interest of Canada in Pakistan because they were originally Canadians. They were originally Pakistani and uh, Pakistanis but had become Canadians. So they had uh, uh, basically interest in both societies. So they could have served as the best bridge between Pakistan and Canada for uh, the transmission of knowledge, both ways, for the transmission of uh, uh, basically uh, research uh, facilities, research work, researchers, etc. you know, equipment, everything. So, and they were a great help uh, for me. And uh, I'm happy to share with you that our uh, Pakistan, you know, origin scientists are serving at uh, the highest positions in, in Canada, uh, in all, all the fields, fields. Canada's uh, largest uh, incubator uh, was established in Ryerson University and it was established by a Pakistan origin scientist. We tried to establish a connection between that incubator and Pakistan Stock Exchange. I will discuss it, and I, I would like to share an interesting tale about it in, my, in the later part of my presentation. My area of function was Ontario province of Canada because I was the consul general or the high commissioner. So I had to focus in that area, which means Toronto and, and the cities around Toronto and the universities around Toronto. But when this uh, uh, council was established, we were contact and they started meeting and uh, having their sessions and conversations, uh, you know, webinars, etc., with other scientists in the field, in various fields. Uh, I was contacted uh, by Pakistan origin scientists in, pro uh, you know, in, in in provinces other than Ontario. For example, from Alberta, from British Columbia, from uh, you know cities like Vancouver, Calgary, etc., where they were very active. And they were already, you know, doing a number of projects in Pakistan, and they wanted uh, my help to basically uh, organize better with their Pakistani partners. So this is this is the key role that a diplomat can play, um, uh, or a high commissioner, or an ambassador, or a consul general, whosoever I mean is in charge can play. I mean, he has to provide a useful platform and establish collaborative, uh, uh, you know, uh, connections. And then guarantee, because the partners in the, in, 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 in the countries of uh, your accreditation, they want guarantee of reliability, credibility of the partners they are engaging with in, uh, in, in the country of your origin. So this is a practical thing. And it's, it, it, it entails a lot of responsibility also an obligation on your part. So you have to be very, very careful. Although I did it alone, but I would like, you know, to now we have a structure in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, some some local basically authenticity also while we connecting while we are connecting you know partners from Pakistan to uh, to to the ones in our country in in, in countries of our accreditation. 
and this was something new you see uh, in toronto we have a very vibrant community which was very much involved in cultural activities and several other activities uh, community welfare activities uh, urdu uh, you know uh, printing of urdu newspapers etc for them this was a new thing this was a matter of prestige for them that and a matter of recognition for them uh, they were not on the landscape scientific science and technology landscape although there were so many pakistani uh, scientists over there but since they were not organized they were not coming together on a platform speaking to the community they did not know about them so as for example dr ikbal just mentioned zulfikar bhutta sahab whom i met in canada and he is a very uh, important part of all my activities uh, uh, you know so so this was a matter of uh, basically prestige and honor for the community also and they whole heartedly supported all my initiatives and i would like to tell you that uh, uh, i was contacted by aga khan hospital from karachi an indus hospital we do not have this uh, uh, facility over there uh, of uh, diagnosing uh, this uh, early age brain cancer that facility is uh, available in sick kids in toronto but there was i mean they were providing these services but it involved some some funds some financial support also which the hospitals which were, i mean either neither aga khan nor uh, indus could provide because they were you know they indus is totally basically charity hospital good one but charity hospital aga khan also has uh, part of it is uh, is charity work and the and the and the children that they were taking care of uh, you know came from very you know, low middle class society and poor uh, low middle class uh, uh, of our society and poor society uh, uh, poor sections of our society and could not afford to uh, to pay for the uh, for the treatment so what we did we convinced uet alumni in toronto to pay for uh, you know uh, the expenditure total expense which was not much on yearly basis which they agreed to and we were very happy to do that so the the community's activities became very productive and when i was coming uh, for my next assignment in in dhaka they all shared with me that because of the i mean the science diplomacy they were able to channelize their uh, uh, energy towards a direction which was very useful for for canada because it was collecting uh, data from pakistan uh, on healthcare and for pakistan pakistanis where they were recruiting you know basically uh, researchers research institutions and other actors involved in the research and this was helping us uh, you know building our capacity in this field we also involved ontario's uh, ontario government's ministry of science and innovation in some of the sessions of our council this gave pakistan recognition as a serious player that wants to involve and that has something to offer to the developed world too this image is very important for a diplomat it helps her or him better organize and take bold initiatives pakistan's missions jobs uh, a job in this regard is mostly concentrated on creating joint platform between pakistan and the host country no envoy is a scientist himself he will need to formulate a vision for holding conferences lectures and workshops and uh, joint platforms or for creating opportunities where science communities can inter could interact through webinar etc for this he needs constant support from our national institutions in terms of need assessment identif identification of focus areas talking points and briefs on what pakistan has to offer uh, in case of a genuinely vibrant collaboration um, if, we, if we wish to establish that kind of collaboration and this was basically my ma main challenge and difficulty uh, i was not receiving any feedback from many institutions which are very important which uh, until we established our uh, you know counterpart in the ministry administrative counterpart in the ministry of uh, foreign affairs and one of my colleagues is here i mean he will be speaking about it on uh, science diplomacy uh, you know how it was established and how it is delivering uh, on on science uh, diplomacy projects now but before di before that it was quite a task for me to contact people to seek information as to what we are doing you know for example in agriculture a lot is happening in agriculture research and development in pakistan but the missions there is a lack i think there is information gap between the mission and the institutions that gap has to be addressed uh, 
back home initially uh, i would come now to the challenges that i faced back home we, we found people who were uh, very skeptic of our efforts and uh, likely outcomes they thought we lacked fundamental training to do the job some mixed up basically diplomacy science policy and scientific and technological research and development and questions basically they raised question questions uh, behind the rational uh, of all what we what whatever we were doing but slowly and gradually things moved ahead we succeeded in creating a stream of interaction between scientific communities of uh, canada and pakistan explored opportunities of scholarships for pakistani students and tried to establish a system of internet based interaction between scientists and researchers dr choudhry also visited canada at our invitation had useful interaction with local scientific community and negotiated a few projects on which iccbs must be working uh, there is a list of you know initiatives which we took which i would skip in short what what i have presented to you is a practical manifestation of what science diplomacy is all about our experience indicates that we must believe in making continuous and relentless effort and if our efforts at a particular place is not getting traction formulate new proposals and renew our efforts if our intention is pure and clear god creates ways to achieve the objectives you have in your mind irrespective of issues and problems uh one thing which i would like to reemphasize and where envoys can play an important role is promotion of the true image of pakistan as a reliable partner in science and technological collaboration additionally in each country the examples of cprdc should be followed with the proper office and administrative network you see in canada there are countries in our region uh these countries have been established offices basically with all administrative paraphernalia uh, in the 50s and 60s for collaboration between their universities now what is happening in our region is this that uh, for one year professors and teachers come from canada i'm talking only about canada it is happening in the us also come from canada to that country and they teach their students you know for one year and then for that one year their professors go to that uh, to to a canadian university and teach there and study there and research i mean this is something that we should also be uh, be looking at uh, we should work, be working on coupling our universities or their specific departments with good universities in other countries there could be a program under which teachers from those universities could be facilitated to teach in our universities and undertake some some research work and vice versa there may be some program somewhere along these lines but the missions do not have any idea at least i do not have any idea i was very active in this field and i tried to get you know information about it but uh, we need to work with our scientific establishments also uh, there is a there are a number of scientific establishments in, in our country there are a number of universities in our country but uh, we need to get real information from them as to what we they can offer how can what is their strategy to involve themselves with uh, with universities abroad only then uh, can a diplomat uh, can an ambassador or a high commissioner uh, you know work effectively uh, in the interest of uh, development in our country and other fields one thing which i would like to mention uh, dr saab mentioned you know pandemic uh, i would like to give the example of where i am now bangladesh you might have uh, read uh, news stories about uh, countries you know basically uh, importing remdesivir there was a drug to treat uh, covid 19 from bangladesh and there was a shortage in bangladesh bangladesh itself you see it's not just the just the job of science uh, scientists science diplomacy or the you know government sector a lot has to be done, done by the private sector also and in all scientific science diplomacy pro projects and initiatives we have to involve private sector whatever was done in bangladesh was the initiative of the private sector they were the ones they i mean you know this it is the it it, it until recently it was the second largest uh, exporter of uh, uh, you know fashion apparel and garments they transformed their basically factories uh, into developing uh, ppes all those uh, garment factories and they started you know exporting the ppes at a very initial stage of uh, Uh, the pandemic at the same time they established uh, you, you see who rules uh, do not apply in times of pandemic 
they fully had, took advantage of this uh, uh, rule and they started you know producing remdesivir with the help of chinese uh, basically they got all this machinery and technology from china and and they produced it over here and this is the this was the job of the private sector so we have to somehow involve private sector in whatever we want to do in science and there should be a vision as to where we want to go in one year's time two years time three years time or five years time because without direction without support without mon monitoring without accountability nothing can be achieved so these were the submissions which i wanted to share with you i hope it would be useful for your uh, thank you so much <laughs> Imran Sadiqi Saab, uh, this was a brilliant, brilliant presentation. In fact, this is such an experience, uh, your own first-hand knowledge, your own building of roads towards science diplomacy within the Foreign Office. And of course, you know, when we begin the work, it also have a lot of challenges, but you know, at the end, there's always room and look at today that we are sitting down together and thinking that how can we, uh, uh, you know, build more further roads and collaborate together in our institutions. You know, science and diplomacy over the past many years has not really um, collaborated that much. But in the second half of the 20th century, we have seen a lot of collaboration between both, uh, you know, both sectors. And the expansion of the internet and, of course, the science and technology sectors and the development of these both, uh, you know, science and technology sectors had created a lot of room for, um, you know, diversifying, innovating diplomacy and changing the way it works uh, at it was before and now it is now. Um, so a lot of issues that uh, we have, uh, you know, diplomats are facing um, uh, or, or challenges that they face or understand, you know, uh, science and technology are helping them to remove all those challenges. And today, as we are sitting down together, um, where participants, where, you know, we recently, you, you just had uh, the first knowledge from uh, Excellency Imran from, from Dhaka right now. So technology has also brought us close. So increasingly, when we are discussing about diplomacy, we also hear the role of uh, international relations departments uh, and, and those who are teaching diplomacy or who are, who are giving the vision to the students or faculty who are teaching are also very important where universities are also play the effective role in developing and building the relationship between the two sectors, the science and diplomats. Uh, not only that the university's overall connections and inviting the cross pollination amongst uh, different sector where the science or the natural sciences are departments are there where uh, social sciences are there. So there always can be cross pollination. So we are so fortunate enough that uh, today, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ali Shah, who is the vice chancellor of a leading Qaid Yazam University is here with us. And we will listen from his kind words that how can this be possible? And how can the two sciences um, can collaborate and build synergies and find solutions for the humanity? Um, so if I can find Dr. Muhammad Ali Shah, can you hear us? Professor Muhammad Ali Shah? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, can you also open? It? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for. Floor is all yours, Dr. Saab. Yeah, thank you very much, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Now, first of all, I would like to congratulate and thank Comstack and all other organizers for organizing this webinar, which is very important, which is very relevant. And uh, I was listening to the views of uh, both the speakers, uh, Honorable Iqbal Chaudhary Saab and uh, the Ambassador Siddiqui. I think uh, the, the, it's like you said in your introduction that uh, there are three components that one is the organizations like Comstack because they have a larger role to play. Then certainly uh, the diplomats uh, like uh, Ambassador Siddiqui uh, because we, we need to have a lot of diplomats who actually think on such lines and who would understand the importance of, uh, of uh, science diplomacy. And third, certainly, is the universities and research organization, because it has two components. One is the policy. So policy has been made by, by different uh, stakeholders, inclusive all these three, uh, like you said, components of the science diplomacy, but, uh, where this will be implemented. So it, it will be definitely implemented through our 
academia, through our scientists, through our universities, through our research organization. As it's been uh, uh, very uh, clearly uh, mentioned in, in, in the, uh, in the uh, opening remarks by uh, Professor Chaudhary, focusing upon uh, this current pandemic situation. This is very important that it has, it has brought us together and we, we now understand the importance of a science diplomacy as well as the international collaborations because you know if almost all nations of the world were equally into it and everybody struggled to to come out of it and work on like ppes or or any other uh, you know uh, different projects related to the genome sequencing and uh, certainly for the development of vaccine and maybe later on for the development of of a drug as well, which is specific for uh, COVID-19. But we, for that, we all understand that we all have to work together. And it is it is not, uh, it could not be done at one uh, country or one organization. So we have to gather the information, put the information together, and then try to develop uh, uh, any uh, remedy for this particular uh, pandemic. And larger than that, we, we must be looking at the development of science, technology, uh, in addition to, because nowadays we are all focused upon the COVID, but there are many things which are beyond COVID and post-COVID. And uh, so we also have to think about the economy, about the other areas of, of research, like you yourself mentioned about artificial intelligence, about machine learning, big data, and, and biotechnology which uh, this uh, vaccine development and the study of this COVID-19 becomes a part of it. For that, I think uh, that we, as, as a universities, <clears throat> we are a partner university with Comstech. And uh, when uh, Professor Chaudhary uh, took over the charge of coordinator general, uh, he was very gracious to visit Kaidiasm University. And our team is basically working with the Comstech, and we are trying to establish a consortium of 20 different universities of the Islamic world to look into different areas of interest, including the infectious diseases and the COVID-19, plus many other areas where we can work uh, to have a mutual benefit for where we can work together for the economic development, for the health issues, for the environment, for agriculture, and many other, uh, you know, earth sciences, earth studies. There are many areas where we can work together. For that, we, we have established a team which is actually uh, trying to make a policy gu guidelines that how can we possibly uh, go forward in this collaboration. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a a big example in the Islamic world to follow. And like uh, 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 Excellency um, uh, Ambassador Sadiqi uh, told us, we are also uh, looking at the similar lines that we can work together with initially with the 20 top universities of, of, of Islamic world and uh, try to work out the synergies which universities can work together and develop a collaborative uh, research projects, as well as uh, the exchange of uh, good professors for three to one, three months to one year, and they can go and teach in and do a research in uh, other countries. So these are the areas which are already been mentioned. I want to add another area, which is again I find it very interesting that we. Like uh, we all know that there are many nations in the world who actually had an opportunity. They developed an opportunity out of this, uh, this uh, pandemic crisis. And one of the opportunity which came to us is this, uh, 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 this online education, the online dis education, the distance, the distance learning. So I think, uh, we can use this platform because this, this is new for us. And if we can collaborate on using this platform for doing, a, for doing a science together, for doing a 
teaching together, for doing a lot of things uh, together. So this uh, opportunity or this, like we are, we were not very fond of uh, uh, having a meeting or, or webinars. We were more used to having a seminars or the conferences where people have to travel, you know, for you know many many hours in the plane and then stay. And then now this this platform has made the things so easy for us to 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 collaborate and to exchange the information. So I think that I agree with the the suggestions of the former two speakers that we have to develop a, a strategy, a mechanism, how to interact and a platform which could be provided by the Comstack. And I look forward that we will be, uh, we will actually start doing things together in a near future to come. And uh, our diplomats like uh, Ambassador Sadiqi and many other diplomats, Pakistani diplomats who are working in, in, in the foreign countries, we can also uh, would like to uh, include the diplomats of the of other uh, countries, the partner countries, which are actually based in Islamabad. So I think we have to work on these lines and then we can uh, bring the, the vice chancellors together and eventually we can bring the scientists together, the faculty together and start working together. And this is, this is I think, which is required and we all look forward to do it. But in addition to this, I would also uh, what would like to suggest that we need to to, to use, utilize this platform of e-learning or the online uh, learning uh, platform which we have developed and we are all, all, all used to it. And uh, so we, we have to further strengthen it and then try to, to use this platform for science diplomacy. So uh, thank you very much from my side. And uh, I wish that uh, all today's webinar will be a great success and look forward to work together with Comstec and all other uh, our partner partner organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dr. Mohammad Ali Chah, who is the Vice Chancellor, uh, Kaidiyazm University, for your remarks. And I hope that we will continue working together, especially engaging universities as a hub of knowledge. Um, science is a source of what Joseph Nye has said as a soft power, right? And uh, being a, being a student of diplomacy, uh, we have seen that the scientific community often works beyond national boundaries on problems of common interest. So, um, so is well placed to support emerging forms of diplomacy that require non-traditional alliances of nations, um, states, non-developed, non-governmental organizations, and of course, when we align our foreign policy goals these channels of scientific exchanges can contribute in building coalitions, uh, also help us to resolve disputes and build peace in fact. And cooperation on the scientific aspect is also, uh, also you know, on working together on, for example, issues like non-proliferation and various others can also bring world more cohesive and closer together. Uh, it also brings understanding as, as you see that in the in institution like Comstack, where very different countries are coming together, learning from each other, building coalitions, you know, science, scientists from one country to another learn from their own experiences. So this is very important. So um, in foreign office recently, you know, this, this initiative has been taken uh, and, and it's very well taken. Uh, and Mr. Kamran Akhtar Malik, who is, who is with us, who is, who is looking after and heading the arms control and disarmament division and heading the science diplomacy desk in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, government of Pakistan. So uh, we will benefit from his presence here also that how this desk is working, how this entire process is happening. And uh, this is this is wonderful experience for all those who want to learn about science diplomacy, specifically coming from a diplomat who is looking after there at the desk in the foreign office. Uh, Kamran Akhtar Malik sir, floor is all yours. I guess you're muted, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the IPDS and Comstack for hosting this webinar on a very contemporary topic. 
the previous speakers raised some very important points and I would like to touch upon some of those points as I go along. Uh, but uh, let me begin by saying that uh, the role of science in diplomacy is not new. Uh, in the past as well, uh, diplomacy has been used to facilitate scientific and technological cooperation among states. And on the other hand, uh, science and technology has been a vehicle for bringing states together as well. And at another level, science has been informing international negotiations on issues such as climate change, uh, health, and other important issues like non-proliferation disarmament. So that role is not new. What the COVID pandemic did was that it did uh, serve the purpose of underscoring the significance, reinforcing the significance of uh, science diplomacy because most of the responses were collaborative and they were rooted in science and technology. But we must also remember that science diplomacy is not just limited to the area of health. Many of the contemporary challenges like food, water, energy security, climate change, environmental degradation, they are basically now transboundary in nature and they have scientific dimensions. So more and more of diplomacy will require an interface with science and technology in the com contemporary world. And since all of these topics are very effectively covered under the SDGs, so when we were establishing the Science Diplomacy Division in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we thought that SDGs will be a very pertinent entry point for science diplomacy. So we focused on technologies, on collaborations, which would somehow help us to uh, uh, achieve SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, they are very important in terms of socioeconomic development, in terms of well-being of the people. Now, uh, as uh, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary mentioned, there has been, during the COVID pandemic, we, we've seen a lot of international collaboration, but there has been politics as well. We've seen uh, vaccine nationalism. We've seen attempts to uh, shift the blame and discredit WHO. And then we've seen uh, other uh, kind of uh, politics going on, uh, like, uh, 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 um, as I mentioned, vaccine nationalism and other things. And, and we've also seen people measuring the relative rise or decline of nation states in terms of their responses to COVID pandemic. So this is how uh, we've seen the COVID pandemic, pandemic play out. Uh, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary said that there was a failure of science diplomacy I would rather reword it and I would say that there was a disconnect between science and technology on one hand and diplomacy and politics on the other. Hence the need for platforms which promote science diplomacy, which bring the communities together. Having said that, uh, I would say that uh, it was not just the COVID pandemic, even before the COVID pandemic, we, we saw that there were outbreaks of SARS, H1N1, MERS and Ebola. And they were contained through rapid multilateral action and cooperation. And this pandemic, pandemic, like other global challenges, it was both knowledge intensive, it led to knowledge intensive collaboration, and it was cross-border in nature. We, we saw some very good examples of cooperation as well. And in fact, the international health regulations of 2005 legally bind all countries to prevent, detect, report, and respond to public health emergencies. So collaboration is an obligation, an international obligation in that sense as well. Uh, some good examples which we saw at the international level, we, we saw academic organizations, we saw industry, we saw health uh, regulatory authorities in countries come together and jointly trying to approach uh, the challenge of the COVID-19. WHO launched a solidarity trial, which involved investigators in over 35 countries, as well as technology access pool for sharing information. Then another uh, uh, success story was the launching of the 75 countries uh, coming together 
and uh, 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 expressing interest to protect their populations and those of other nations uh, through COVAX facility, a mechanism designed to guarantee rapid, fair, and equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines globally. Then we also saw a scientific community pitching in through sharing of open access designs to COVID-19 protective equipment, molecular components, and publications. Uh, then we saw International Network for Government Science Advice, INSA, uh, they designed a policy tracker which provides a one-stop resource to keep track of how policy interventions are being made by different national and subnational governments across the globe. The information provided through advice, evidence-based interventions, and other uh, solutions to the COVID-19 pandemic. At the ComStack level, as Dr. Rikwal Chaudhary pointed out, th there is now a network of OIC laboratories on diagnostics. The OIC countries are trying to COVID-19 pandemic. And here I would agree with the previous speakers that we need a multidisciplinary approach to uh, uh, conduct science diplomacy. For example, when we are collaborating in the area of vaccines, it's not just the national health authorities. At time, uh, you have to bring the pharmaceutical industry together. You have to have a political agreement between states that they would allow vaccines manufactured by a group of states or by a group of industries into their market. And that in turn will entail collaboration between regulatory uh, bodies of those countries. So there are multiple agencies which will get involved in science diplomacy. It's not just the scientific organizations, regulatory bodies, pharmaceutical industries, and uh, academicians, and every aspect, and politicians as well. It even requires collaboration between custom authorities, because we saw during the 2005 earthquake in Pakistan, there were countries who were willing to help Pakistan, and they wanted to bring in equipment. Yet, there was a long procedure of custom clearances required, and that required custom authorities to be a part of of the initiative. So it has to be, uh, it has to involve multiple disciplines. Now, uh, coming back to Pakistan's response to COVID-19 pandemic, I think we did fairly well. We mobilized various aspects of science diplomacy to counter the ongoing pandemic. It included state level intervention through centrally operated national command and operation center, the NCOC. Uh, which was focused on a unified national effort against COVID-19 and a multidisciplinary effort. And uh, we also saw that the government of Pakistan hosted a portal which provided a one-stop resource on COVID-19 information in Pakistan, as well updated advisories from the WHO. Our missions abroad played a very important role, and they actively engaged throughout uh, by sharing the latest key scientific information and experiences of their host countries in fighting COVID-19 pandemic. Again, the Ministry of Science and Technology, in support with other partners, catalogued COVID-19 protective equipment in Pakistan. These products included body suits, fabric body covers, face masks, face protection equipment, hospital supplies, hand sanitizers, and temperature equipment. So science diplomacy was in that sense also very crucial. And our missions are right now also promoting these products abroad. This uh, brings me to the point that this COVID pandemic has in a way presented an opportunity for Pakistan to invest in its local innovation and R&D system. And here, I, I think our missions abroad can play a very important role, not only in terms of marketing our products abroad, but also in terms of facilitating our local manufacturers and producers in meeting the uh, uh, regulatory requirements of the importing countries. So that is how there are various roles which Pakistani missions and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs can play. 
Now there is an other aspect. Uh, uh, we, uh, we as a developing country would like to move from commodity exports to high technology exports. And science diplomacy provides us an avenue to uh, move towards high technology exports. And that is where we will also be able to develop political leverages and political influence. And that is how science can help in terms of forwarding our diplomatic objectives. Uh, it's not just the health feed in the uh, area of agriculture. We have some very good institutions who are working on new climate change resistant varieties of crops. They are doing a lot of research and we can market these crops. We can have these patents uh, marketed internationally. We uh, are Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission is applying nuclear science and technology to meet uh, to pursue 13 out of the 17 sustainable development goals in agriculture, in health, in clean power generation and in many other fields, in industry as well. So these are the areas where we can market not only our high technology products, we can also market our influence, positive and progressive image of Pakistan abroad, the term you use, soft power. So we can project our soft power through science diplomacy as well. As uh, our high commissioner in Dhaka pointed out, the problem at times is that our missions abroad are not fully aware of the potential in Pakistani industry. And there is a need to have better connection with the industry as well. And I fully agree with that. And for that purpose, uh, we have been encouraging Comstack and also the Ministry of Science and Technology to have a proper mapping and foresight exercise so that we are aware about our strengths and weaknesses and we are aware about what opportunities our STI landscape offers for international collaboration. And this is one area where we would like to work with our partners like Comstech, like the Ministry of Science and Technology and uh, with the universities as well. Because the STI landscape is uh, most robustly defined by our academic institutions. And we would like to have that as well. And as an example, uh, let me tell you how a lack of mapping and foresight hinders uh, s and collaborations at the international level. We had a local industry which was being denied high corrosion resistant valves uh, from the international market. And they desperately required those valves for their caustic soda plant. And uh, they turned to the foreign office to help them procure such valves from any foreign country. Uh, instead of turning to a foreign country, we first uh, started to look for uh, the possibility of making these valves available through a local manufacturer. And uh, we contacted the heavy mechanical complex in Texila, and uh, we found out that uh, they could not only manufacture such valves, but they could in fact develop the whole caustic soda plant for the local industry, but the local industry was not aware. And then we arranged a number of meetings between local industries in that sector and the HMC, and they got a number of orders. So, uh, you know, that is why we think that mapping and foresight is required. It can save us a lot of uh, you know, foreign currency and it can enhance our exports as well. So that is where we are encouraging the country. We have already worked with the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission and we have prepared a brochure on what the PAC is doing and how it, its technology, technological applications can help other countries in terms of pursuit of uh, sustainable development goals. And that is how our mission will be more well aware and they can market our products better. Similarly, Sparco, they are doing a remarkable job in terms of forest cover uh, monitoring, in terms of agricultural crop monitoring, in terms of disaster prediction and management. And these are the uh, expertise which we can market at the international level. So we would uh, like to work with Comstack, with the universities, with the Ministry of Science and Technologies in terms of having proper mapping and foresight exercises. We are also in the process of establishing a portal uh, which will be hosted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs 
because uh, we want to uh, it to be a one stop shop and here we will put in uh, uh, information about our universities the educational opportunities they offer the uh, um, kind of international collaborations they would like to have we will be sharing those links with our mission and our missions will have uh, access to all that data so that they can facilitate better collaborations at the international level now uh, when we talk about uh, science diplomacy uh, one thing which is very important besides a proper survey of the sti landscape is to have a science policy which is directly linked to your socio economic development plans because you cannot promote science and technology in a society where the significance of science is not very well known people in pakistan look at science as an esoteric pursuit which is reserved for the domains of scientists and at times our scientists are to be blamed because they use jargon as an expression of power so we, we have to involve social scientists in that endeavor as well so that they can bring science and technology close to the heart of the people and once people realize the significance of science and technology in the society they will be the ones who will force the governments to invest more in science and technology they will be the ones who will become uh, ambassadors for pakistan because a society which values science is a society which is respected by everyone at the international level as well and uh, i would like to close by saying that not everything is rosy in the area of science diplomacy there are a number of problems there are issues of technology denials and we have seen at times that even basic scientific research instruments like oscilloscopes which are used normally abroad in uh, undergraduate science laboratories they are not uh, made available to pakistan and there are technology denials on political grounds on strategic grounds so till the time these technology denials are not addressed at the international level at the political at a political platform there will be problems and in fact by these technology denials the uh, many supplier countries are hurting socio economic development for the people of pakistan we have seen countries who have put restrictions on exports of radio pharmaceuticals to pakistan now radio pharmaceuticals cannot be used in any way in the production of uh, any weapon or any weapon system or any missile system they are purely used for medicinal uses yet they are denied on political grounds so we have to look at these issues as well similarly artificial intelligence this is a technology which will be fundamental to any progress in any field of science in the future especially disease surveillance and control yet artificial intelligence is a dual use technology and it can be used for military purposes and it will be denied to many countries and it will be provided to many other countries on preferential grounds so there is politics involved and there is science involved and that is why the ministry of foreign affairs fully recognize the significance of science diplomacy and we are in the process of refining our system further developing them instructing our missions accordingly and building partnerships with local stakeholders which include academia which includes organizations like comstech comsets eco science foundation industries and journalists and social scientists and we will be looking forward to uh, further collaborations with all these people thank you uh, brilliant kamran after so this is such a brilliant uh, discussion and um, sharing such an important information what your desk and yourself is leading in foreign office um there few questions as well uh, one question that has been asked by one of the friend who is part of this uh, conversation is asghar abbasi who has been asking from dr ikbal about what steps are in offering in developing linkages with institutions by comstack for dealing with the present and post covid 
period. And then uh, the question, second question is for Mr. Uh, Excellency Sadiqi, is about the role of diplomatic community in these times, very critical, of course, and how to motivate them to do the work other than diplomacy on in technical matters and technical fields. Um, uh, Dr. Iqbal, if you can uh, also share the uh, how the Comstack is dealing with, uh, you know, building the relationship and linkages with institutions, especially. Uh, and there are also uh, questions. Yes, please, sir. Please uh, go ahead. Uh, OK, allow me to answer. I think the greatest strength of Comstock is that it has a very strong footprint uh, in the Muslim world and even beyond also. And uh, this is exactly what we can do. We can link institutions together. We can provide mobility and framework for them to work together. But I think it's, this is what is extremely important and has been mentioned by uh, our High Commissioner in uh, Dhaka, uh, that uh, institutions, credibility is very, very important. I mean, if you develop bilateral cooperation and, uh, and you link univers universities and institutions together, then following up is very, very important. You uh, discuss, you negotiate, you come up to certain decisions it's very important that you follow it up. Any non-seriousness would lead to a loss of credibility, not only for your institution, but also for the country. Second is that your institution should be able to sustain those minimum collaboration, which you promise to carry forward. You shouldn't really be, from day one, you cannot rely on international funding or national funding. Often this never comes. And if you uh, build the whole, uh, pyramid on uh, literally sent uh, by assuming that someone would give you tons of money and then only your institutional uh, linkages was developed, it would never happen. A practical sense is that uh, discuss, come up to those uh, uh, activities and programs which are doable, practical, uh, which are mutually beneficial and win-win situation and then follow it up from your own institutional resources. Uh, and without that, you will not be able to develop a credibility. So Comstack can initiate the whole process of linking institutions, but uh, it cannot really sustain it for very long time. You have to do it by yourself also. Uh, thank you, Dr. Iqbal. You, I also encourage you to uh, read what uh, Ambassador of Lebanon, who is recently arrived, welcome Ambassador to, to Pakistan. You have uh, you have written a question for Dr. Iqbal. I will encourage you to uh, read that as well. Um, while I'm asking uh, Ambassador Sadiqi for uh, related to encouraging and role of diplomatic community in times which are critical and how to motivate them to do jobs other than you know uh, diplomacy for instance as you have taken the initiative in science diplomacy when you see that a uh, difference is happening and you can uh, you know develop that opportunity and as as Kamran Saab is heading this special desk as science diplomat there in the foreign office excellency excellency yeah, the, the question has an implication that the pakistani diplomats are not motivated enough so i would say that uh, basically the thing is this, that uh, there are practical, you see, issues, as I said. When a diplomat uh, goes uh, uh, on his assignment, he has to develop uh, proper understanding of the weaknesses and uh, strengths of his own country and the country of accreditation. As I said, no one is going to establish a one-way cooperation uh, with Pakistan or any other country. People are looking for everywhere in the world, whether it, it is in the it is any developed country or a developing country, anywhere in the world, people are looking for a mutually beneficial collaborative uh, mechanism, cooperation, collaboration, you know, support, reciprocal support arrangements, etc. So we need to know what we can offer first of all, and in this uh, uh, you know uh, context, the role of our institutions is very important. Our universities is very. Important. On one hand, we have to go, I mean, before going to our, our, our assignment, we have to establish connections and rapport uh, basically with all these uh, institutions. As my colleague in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said, and very rightly said that countries respect those countries 
which have done something in innovation in science and technology because this today i mean the things have changed completely if you have technological edge then you are respected or you have if you have anything to offer in terms of science and technology or innovation you will be respected and i have seen this happening with me when i was in canada and i see here whatever limited i mean uh, uh, scope i have over here so the thing is this that uh, you want to pro if you want the pakistani diplomats to promote uh, collaboration and cooperation you have to equip them we are not scientists we are not technical experts we want to know more we have to be proactive of course to know more from our university and research institutions but at the same time i have, i would focus on the practical aspect also uh, only uh, rather than going into theories and uh, other debates the thing is this that uh, when i started contacting uh, um, uh, various universities from toronto uh, no one you know except one or two no one you know basically uh, was responsive i would say i had to involve a third party of uh, which had the trust of the universities and the vice chancellor etc so this trust deficit has to go we all represent i mean all the pakistani uh, uh, diplomats and ambassadors and high commissioners are very sincerely representing pakistani all pakistani institutions in all the provinces when we found out uh, 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 you know some um, scholarship opportunities in the university of toronto i sent to one of the institutions at the federal level and unfortunately they were not uh, uh, i mean as i would have wished them uh, they, they had not uh, you know circulated those opportunity to all the universities they were still waiting for god knows what so i had to collect email addresses of all the universities and i made a point made it a point that it goes to everywhere all the universities in balochistan all the universities in sind punjab uh, and kp and uh, all the education institutions which could off i mean which the students of uh, um, if we could get get candidate candidates from there I, I shared, you know, all that information because information is the is knowledge. We are sitting in Toronto. We know what is happening. Your representative is paid for it. We go there. We keep an eye as to what is happening. What is our interest? We should be knowing our interest, and how can we support our development strategy? You see, all these efforts has they have to go to to the sustainable development strategy of Pakistan. The growth tra trajectory has to go up. The growth has to be strengthened. and with growth we would be able to you know deal with poverty with healthcare problems with i mean science and technological development uh, they should have some 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 meaning you know in terms of changing the lives of people so uh, so this is our job i mean we are motivated enough we need to be uh, our knowledge base has to be strengthened as far as uh, uh, strengths and uh, and uh, the weaknesses of the country uh, and you have to be very forthcoming when we ask you we are asking you to help you we are not asking you we do not have any interest at all personal interest or institutional interest we want you to have this information uh, to prepare your students we had launched a program of introducing a, a you know artificial intelligence subjects in uh, class 9 uh, and 10 syllabus and we had a few uh, basically partners in the us and canada uh, who were willing to you know basically prepare a syllabus for us uh, uh, so that students should have an initial knowledge before they go uh, uh, basically for uh, their secondary level educations or higher studies they, they should have some knowledge of artificial intelligence and they accordingly can uh, prepare themselves to deal with the challenges of the coming world so the thing is this it was quite a job to find willing schools to volunteer Uh, uh you know to adopt those uh, uh, basically guidelines given by our, our 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 experts we had to involve charities good charity schools uh, there are a number of schools running in karachi and lahore and in peshawar also we spoke to them and uh, they did come forward and they, they introduced those uh, uh, basically uh, syllabus in in their schools so the problem is this we are here we know what is happening here we are very willing to inform you and we will be very willing to guarantee your work because the institutions in the developed uh, developed countries particularly they want some guarantee from officials and some involvement of of, of the officials when when these collaborative mechanisms are uh, establishing and we would be very happy to do that but at the same time we want response from the universities from the research institutions from uh, hospitals if it is healthcare 
there is education, there is artificial intelligence, you know, all these institutions. For example, cybersecurity has a strong uh, security implication for us. Uh, things are changing. The war, the whole war, the way the war will be fought, will be the whole concept is changing. Uh, and uh, and in Canada, where I was, I know a number of people who are involved in very very useful and productive work. My colleague from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs just mentioned that we are not uh, uh, not just Pakistan but other countries also. They are not being shared. Uh, you know whatever is happening in the field of cyber uh, technology, cyber uh, basically security technology in the developed world. Even syllabus are syllabus are not being shared with the with our universities. So this is something. Uh, that we need to look uh, into. As far as diplomats are concerned, one, we are motivated. A, two, we need capacity building, of course. And now we have establishment in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, a, a division, uh, you know, uh, dealing with that. We hope that uh, the, 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 the information from our own, our own basically society is coming to us, will be coming to us, uh, uh, you know, up to date information, uh, the information on the strengths and the weaknesses. Uh, of uh, uh, strengths uh, which we can market as uh, in agriculture and other uh, fields and the weaknesses which we have to address too. You see, uh, and then we would have, we would be more basically, uh, uh, have more, I mean, uh, I would say, uh, is, uh, have more capacity to, to deliver on the mandate uh, as far as, uh, diplo uh, you know, science diplomacy. Thank you so much, Imran Sahib, uh, Excellency Master. This is such a wonderful and comprehensive reply. Before we sign off, there's a, there's a, a student, a scholar, uh, Dr. Fawad Muhammad, who has been part of China Pakistan University Consortium, and he was sharing that the um, in, in question is about that uh, Pakistan is really far behind in science diplomacy, and we could not develop a single diagnostic industry to be ready for the next epidemic and for any and you know, epidemic diseases, uh, either HSC, hepatitis or dengue or HIV AIDS or any anything like that. And he is saying that he had also raised uh, this question and this talk and contributions in in both uh, both countries, uh, university consortiums. And he is also um, the coordinator of health biotechnology in Khyber Medical University. And, uh, you know, he's, he's looking after that, how these, these two countries or, or a third party or fourth party or different countries can come together and, and build the capacity of Pakistan specifically for building the relationship amongst, amongst the scientific community to building biotechnology uh, specifically for health related issues. And um, since we saw, um, and we have, we have recently seen as well that many countries, including China has also, um, you know, took a lead in biotechnology. How can that be possible? Um, and then uh, of course, uh, because scientists are here, diplomats are here. So my question from the panel would be related to the fact that how um, these, these things can be done. Um, as we are also facing, as you see, that the locust problem across country is facing, which is also linked to biotechnology. Um, how can how can we solve these kind of issues by sharing our, uh, you know, sharing uh, and ask and receiving the best practices from uh, the global scale? Uh, if the panel would like to uh, respond to that, Kamran Saab, Dr. Iqbal, uh, if you can if you can contribute in that. Uh, technology is a very, very important subject, and uh, that is uh, this is among the 12 uh, disruptive technologies uh, which McKenzie has identified. It's called the New World, and uh, this uh, can bring huge transformation. Biotechnology is now genome editing, uh, advanced genomics, and CRISPR, and fast breeding, and a lot of it. And firstly, biotechnology is also one of the most controversial subjects in the world because you know, so much has been uh, negatively, negatively portrayed. And that is the reason why it need to be handled very carefully. Uh, biotechnological developments are so numerous because biotechnology is a cross cutting, you know, in different biological sciences, you use biotechnology as a tool. So biotechnology is not a subject, it's a tool in uh, so many other uh, fields. Uh, we should, very uh, carefully look into what is uh, beneficial for us. Uh, it is extremely important to have an objective analysis of biotechnological development. 
because one impression which I would like to say that uh, by developing in the field of biotechnology are faster than the development of ethics related to it. And uh, that is the reason why it's important to have, uh, of course, uh, we look into the development of what is happening in the field of biotechnology, development of, uh, uh, of information network like public exist. Uh, so it's, it's certainly a very important aspect. Um, Kamran sir, please go ahead. Um, as far as the question related to biotechnology, I think Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary was the best qualified person to respond to that and which he did. I, I would like to tackle another aspect of the question because uh, there was uh, this uh, feeling that somehow uh, we've not been able to develop uh, some diagnostic capacities and uh, we've been lacking behind in terms of collaboration in this direction. But as Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary pointed out, uh, under the umbrella of the Comstec, we have established a network of diagnostic laboratories in the OIC countries. And the purpose is to share experiences, to share expertise and technologies. What I, I think there is a need for better outreach. While we are creating a network between countries, uh, various OIC countries of diagnostic laboratories, I, I think maybe the Comstec also should consider reaching out to the consortium of uh, universities. And maybe that is where I think more collaboration, more networking and linkages are required. It's not that we are not doing anything. I think everybody is working in their own compartments. So that is where science diplomacy can actually help. And uh, uh, just a final word about uh, science diplomacy, because I think this is very important to mention. When we uh, talk about science, science is not something which is, should be limited to tertiary level of education to PhDs. Science can happen at any level. Innovation can happen at the level of processes as well. And a technician, a good welder, a good plumber, a good electrician, if we are able to produce that, if we are able to have international collaborations in terms of joint diploma program so that our technicians' qualifications are recognized at the international level, they will offer us opportunity to explore the international labor market as well. So we should pay attention to those aspects of science diplomacy as well, which are closer to the hearts of the people, closer to their daily lives so that you know, we should keep in mind. And finally, while we are looking for collaborations with the advanced countries, we should also focus on South-South collaboration as well, because there will be many problems peculiar to the developing countries for which South-South collaboration with us. We have many tropical diseases inflicting countries in Africa, for example. Yet nobody is racing to find a cure or a vaccine or a medicine for their treatment because that one, they are not problems uh, common to develop advanced world, unlike the COVID pandemic. And number two, they are not commercially attractive for large pharmaceutical companies. So that is where South-South collaboration is very important and science diplomacy should be focusing on that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kamran Akhtar Saab. This is such a brilliant Hello, conversation uh, that I, we had. Please, please, sir, Dr. Saab, please go I, ahead. Uh, can I uh, reflect on, on what Kamran Akhtar Saab has mentioned? You see, it's extremely important to work uh, within the Global South. It's very important because even within the Global South, you would find institutions which are as good as any big institution in the world. So there is, there are centers of excellence exist within uh, the larger, uh, you know, this whole framework of, uh, of uh, South. And uh, those centers are the point where we can, we can use them for developing capacity. Now, when he mentioned about uh, virology and diagnostics, uh, I see it in a very different way. I feel that preparedness for COVID-19 is, uh, is a capacity building for future pandemics also because in, in the technology which is used for uh, diagnosis of viral disease is very generic. You know, you once you develop mastery of that subject, then you can use it for any unknown disease, viral or bacterial, because this is primarily RNA and DNA which is required 
to be extracted out of these biological samples and to identify them also. And then this is where CompStack is trying to reach out to many countries uh, in, in Africa. And we found that even, even an intervention such as uh, a workshop in which people can see virtually how PCRs are extracted safely in BSL-3 is so much appreciated. I keep receiving lots of messages from all over, from Gambia to, to uh, Burkina Faso to Sudan and all that. So people appreciate uh, any intervention because helping uh, countries in the South would have high impact and it can bring lots of good to people and also to the countries. Thank you so much, Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary, for this uh, intervention and answering questions from uh, different parts of different people uh, who will be participating in this important conversation. Um, as as uh, all the panelists are agreeing that the uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not only the policy levels or policy makers should make the decisions and put forward uh, the agenda of national interest and forwarding the scientific science and collaboration together, but it's also responsibility of academics, uh, universities, researchers to strengthen them to move forward everything as Ambassador Siddiqui has also shared that, you know, it's not only the job of a diplomat, but also we all need to strengthen their hands so that we can able to, you know, project our work that we, we are doing. And our phenomenal uh, foreign policy institutions and think tanks and universities are equipped. And of course, uh, the institutions like Comstack and various others and uh, and consortiums like like today we partner with Inter-University Consortium for Promotion of Social Sciences, Humanities and Arts. So so how this also strengthening uh, the the institutions and building relationships we, we can we can easily manage how the how the science diplomacy can look like for pakistan and we need also the scientists engineers and all kind of experts not only the scientists the natural scientists but also the social scientists to move forward and strengthen uh, the institution as well and not looking at only for help but also bring help for each other so you know in these digit in these technological ages where um where where where, where things are changing, COVID has really drastically reshaped what the worldview can look like, what the world exactly can look like, and how can we collaborate and see uh, each other and the way we are communicating right now, look at that. Um, then, um, you know, it, everybody's uh, role is important. So we need scientists, engineers, as I said, and entrepreneurs to coach and teach until the world is truly flat, as Friedman said that the uh, um, you know, world can look like flat when we when we when we build relationship amongst uh, educational institutions, uh, creating the economic opportunities and equality amongst uh, societies for the sustainable knowledge for all them for all all the communities here uh, to build a better world and see that how the 21st century science diplomacy can look like. I'm so honored. Um, unfortunately, Professor Dr. Tawar Rahman, who is the Chairman Prime Minister Task Force on Science and Technology, Government of Pakistan, was supposed to be here, but because of the call from the Prime Minister of important uh, discussions. And of course, uh, his, his, his work is, um, of course, uh, needs a lot of input for the Prime Minister's recent science and technology task force has been created because of the vision of, um, uh, you know, digital and technological Pakistan um, and diversifying it. So we, we could not benefit from him, but we definitely bring forward his ideas and we will definitely bring along so this kind of conversation will continue, inshallah. Um, I'm honored that Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary, who is a coordinator general of Comstack, has given us such a great input. Um, and, and you are leading such an important organization where not only the Muslim countries, but also the overall, uh, the you know, building the relationship, how the, how the North and South can also collaborate. And I'm honored that uh, uh, Excellency Imran Hamad Sadiqi, who is the, you know, you can you can see from him that how he had envisioned that uh, built that and you know taken the lead and you know created the uh, created the desk that you know uh, mr kamran akhtar malik is heading and of course he's leading very well of course you can also see from his vision as well that and i'm honored that um, uh, his presence
surprises and made this discussion also enrich. And of course, uh, uh, we've also been joined by uh, Mr. Ahmed Vaisrav sir, but could not manage with the board of uh, Chairman Board of Governors University of Lahore. But we'll definitely bring all those individuals and stakeholders together uh, in this continuous discussion of ours on science diplomacy and how can we play our part. And those I'm grateful and honored for all those discussant who were there, diplomats from different uh, uh, countries who are present here in the in the room, and those who are uh, listening to us right now in the live live or Facebook on different pages of ours. Thank you so much for your contribution, and I hope that you all those students who are listening to us and those faculty members and, and, and those policy makers who are listening to us, you can continue collaborating, you can continue studying about the science diplomacy and I hope that we can be able to uh, uh, do better. And I'm, uh, this, this seminar was brought together with the COMSAT, who is the uh, Ministerial Standing Committee on Science, Scientific and Technological Cooperation, headed by uh, Professor Dr. Paul Chaudhary, myself, Institute of Peace and Diplomatic Studies, the Inter-University Consortium for Promotion of Social Sciences, Humanities and Arts, a 50 plus, 50 plus uh, universities alliance across across Pakistan. So I thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you soon, inshallah, and we'll continue bringing such conversation together so that we can uh, bring forward Pakistan's uh, wonderful and great, you know, but, vision uh, image. Yes, Dr. Saab. If you can really allow me, because the Excellency no? uh, Ambassador of Lebanon has asked something extremely yes. important. It's more of a yes. proposal. Uh, uh, he uh, he uh, mentioned that there is a need of a platform which Congress should establish about new technologies, innovation, inventions. Uh, I fully agree with it. Uh, partly we are doing it. If you visit Comstack webpage, you would find a constant update on technological development in the field of COVID-19. There is only one part of it, but you know we have to we have to uh, look into it how to expand it. Of course, we we have to be selective because we cannot include everything in. But your proposal is absolutely important. Thank you very much, Excellency. And Excellency, I would strongly encourage you to visit Comstack and Dr. Iqbal would welcome you. Definitely, thank you so much for your contribution and your participation in this conversation. Thank you so much, everybody. See you soon, inshallah. Stay safe, everybody.